Hello and welcome back to Clem's Content Corner. Today we are going to be ranking the six seasons of Line of Duty worst to best, but before we get started, take a moment to smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell if you want to see more content like this from me. Starting off at the foot of the table, I'm going to put the most recent season and what a lot of us expect will likely be the final ever season of the show. I'm not saying season six was genuinely bad, in fact there were some great episodes in there, and some moments that truly lived up to the show's best work, such as the cliffhanger ending with Kate and Ryan's armed standoff, but unfortunately it was just held back by a sluggish start and an underwhelming conclusion. Kelly MacDonald as Joe Davidson wasn't my favourite guest lead, coming across as quite rehearsed in the delivery of her lines in the first few episodes, but she did win me round later, going from defensively contained to emotionally shattered, with the reveal that Joe's parents were brother and sister in her second interview scene, and in general her visual acting was impressively convincing. There were other positives to take as well, such as some of the show's most ambitious scenes, car stunts, calling in the helicopters, the action was there in places, just not all the right places. As for rewatch value, on the one hand, season 6 did sit a bit better with me after a second watch, but it's just hard to get through that opening couple of episodes, knowing that a similar sort of dissatisfaction is waiting at the end. Whilst I didn't dislike the ending as much as some, it was a letdown, and overall it just felt like season 6 peaked too early, and couldn't keep up the quality to match episodes 3, 4 and 5, which stood up as some of the best Line of Duty has ever given us. In 5th place, I'm going for season 4. Again, this was not bad television by any means. In fact, I wouldn't even call season 4 mediocre television. There were good twists, mystery building, cliffhangers and battles of wits. It had a lot of the hallmarks of a classic season, and the first time watching it, I enjoyed season 4 a lot. What lets it down is its lack of rewatch value. One of my favourite things about Line of Duty is going back and watching how the reveals were first planted and foreshadowed. It's satisfying to see that attention to detail with the benefit of hindsight, and kick myself for not noticing bits and pieces hidden in plain sight, and with season 4 there just isn't a lot of that to be had. My opinion of Roz as a person didn't change a whole lot throughout the season. From episode 1, I thought she was just a police officer trying to restart her career, and that's why she was going all out to charge Michael Farmer. Not evil, but equally not very sympathetic, and that's pretty much how she was throughout. Thandie Newton played her part well, I thought she did a convincing job to make that cold and manipulative character feel real, but the bigger mysteries in that season were Balaclava Man and the disappearance of Tim, and whilst both were resolved entirely plausibly, there wasn't much in the way of tricking the viewer to unravel a second time around. In fourth place, I've opted for season 5. Much like the final season, season 5 was a mixed bag, but a better mixed bag than its successor. I liked the idea of investigating another undercover officer, even better that they were undercover within the OCG itself, the backstory to tie John Corbett into Ted's past was good as well, and Stephen Graham was mesmerising as the guest lead. In terms of an acting performance, he might even be the best ever on the show. This season also saw the mystery of H heighten further, with doubts about Ted resurfacing and the inner workings of the OCG explored in more depth than ever before. This felt like it had the makings of maybe the show's best ever season, but what let it down was the amount of suspension of disbelief it required from the audience. Whilst it was a plan orchestrated to corner Ted and shut down AC-12, there were things that came up in Ted's interview like disposing of his laptop that Jill couldn't have foreseen, but were pivotal in making Ted look guilty. The Morse code retcon at the end was also impossible to buy, and the more I think about it, it wasn't even necessary just have it that Hilton was H and there was another bent copper controlling Hilton that kept their identity hidden from Dot. Problem solved. Season 5 came in for quite a lot of criticism for such reasons at the time, but I think it is starting to be more appreciated as time goes by and overall 4th on the list seems like a good spot for it. In 3rd place, I'm putting Season 1. Season 1 had the task of establishing the premise, building the world and the characters, all while getting us involved in a tangled up mystery that both stood up on its own merits and set up stuff for the seasons to come and it did a really good job. The production was a little rougher around the edges, with some of the camera work being shoddy at times. The characters were a tad one-dimensional at this point, Steve wasn't wearing his waistcoats yet, and the script was a bit more hit and miss. In particular, Ted's storm in a coffee cup line is quite embarrassing looking back. But nevertheless, it's the season that got me hooked, and flawed or otherwise, I still find new things to like about it even when I go back and watch it today. Lenny James as Tony Gates was a good acting performance, probably the standout of that first season, but again, my opinions of Tony didn't really change all that much throughout the season, and it was more about watching AC-12 come to the conclusion that he wasn't really the bad guy, which we already knew. Second on the list is Season 2, an entirely natural continuation from the first season, making good use of the bigger production budget without losing any of the initial charm. 
Perhaps the most complex mystery the show has ever woven around a character, Keely Hawes as Lindsay Denton is my all-time favourite guest lead on the show. Brilliantly written and performed, there is just the right amount left open to interpretation whilst cementing her plot points in a way that really makes everything gel. Twists by the barrel, the characters better fleshed out with their own personal weaknesses and shortcomings, and our sympathies dragged here, there and everywhere. If season 2 was a trickier plot to make sense of, that gives it all the more in terms of rewatch value, and this was when the show went from good to great in my opinion. And that leaves just one season to take the top spot, and that of course is season 3. I don't think this will be particularly controversial, as the third season tends to be viewed as the pinnacle of the show by a lot of fans, with some even believing Jay should have called it quits after the caddy arc had come to fruition. Whilst I don't actually agree with that, it was a fantastic way to wrap up that first era of the show. Something that had been planted from the very beginning, with Dot embedded as a saboteur for the OCG, building with him having to investigate himself, joining the AC-12 team, having to get his own hands dirty for the first time by killing Lindsay, framing Steve, facing his own interview, all culminating in an action-packed armed chase scene, and those are just the highlights. The more they gave Craig Parkinson to do, the more he came into his own, with all the layers and sides to that character fully explored along the way. But despite all of this, it didn't overshadow Daniel Mays as the guest lead, who gave a chilling performance as the intimidating Danny Waldron on a path of revenge against those who had abused him in the past. For a character who died after his first R on screen, there was an incredible amount of depth to Danny's character, and the way he was able to advance the plot, even after his death, kept him at the forefront of our minds, despite a web of other things going on all the while. If season 2 saw the show go from good to great, season 3 saw it become the best thing on British television. But how would you rank the seasons of Line of Duty? Comment your list below, don't forget to like and subscribe, ring that notification bell if you want to join my best team, and most importantly, have a great day.